My name is Colleen Carsonson Peterson, and I'm with the Cole Foundation. Just a second, I'm get the sandbag out of here. Foundation is one of the top three charities to present to you tonight. We're very honored to have this opportunity. Like I said, my name is Colleen Carstensen Peterson, and I am the founder and president of the Children's Organization of Lending Equipment. In short, the Cole Foundation. This foundation helps children with special needs get the adaptive equipment that they need so they can learn, grow, and play. I started this nonprofit after experiencing many struggles with having a severely disabled son myself, named Cole. I knew having a disabled son, I was gonna have many fights, but one of the fights I didn't think I would have is fighting to get the adaptive equipment that he needed to learn, grow, and play. And I also feel that other families shouldn't have to deal with this either. And this is exactly why I started the Cole Foundation in 2020. A little hint, I had some time on my hands. <laughs> the Cole Foundation's mission is to connect, um, to connect adaptive equipment from children with disabilities who outgrow their equipment and to connect it to children who need it. In our first year, we helped 22 children and their families. To date this year, we have already changed the lives of 56 children in and around the Dakota and Washington County. The Cole Foundation is based in Woodbury, where I live, and our storage unit is here in Hastings, where I was born and raised at the Carsonson household, actually in the barn. I wasn't raised in the barn. <laughs> And some of you actually may know me as the figure skater in town. That was a long time ago, but I'm the same person. <laughs> our why. If you haven't had the opportunity to stop by our booth, please do. For those of you that did, I'm guessing you were pretty shocked by the cost of this adaptive equipment. Adaptive equipment is expensive. Insurance companies will only typically approve one or two pieces of equipment. And don't make any mistake that medical assistance isn't any better. And even if this piece of equipment does get approved, it will take 12 months for it to be entered into the family's home. And I can guarantee you that every single piece of equipment that I've ever had from my son has taken over a year. And this shower chair is actually a perfect example. This piece of equipment took two and a half years for it to get to my house. Meanwhile, I had to pick up my 40 pound son. Watch the shower. Oh. And place him carefully on the floor on a wet, slippery floor. And even if I was dressed like this, I would have to undress, take a shower with my son and pick him up carefully and bring him to the bed to dry him off and change him. This was a task actually that I would not allow my mom, who happens to be one of my nurses, or my husband or my other nursing staff to do because of the safety. And you might be wondering why I have this half wheelchair here. Recently, a kid out of Washington County who is about to have his third brain surgery, this is what the insurance approved for him, it was a frame of a wheelchair. It did not cover the wheels, the brakes, the seat cushion, but I'm happy to tell you that the Cole Foundation was able to give him a wheelchair to use that's fully and complete while they're waiting and fighting through the insurance companies for him to actually have his own wheelchair. Our vision, we believe each child deserves these basic necessities. They deserve to stand. They deserve to take a shower safely. 
They deserve the opportunity to walk, learn to ride a bike, and just be like any other kid. And I'm proud to say that the Cole Foundation offers this service at no cost to these families. So what exactly are we talking about when I keep saying adaptive equipment? It's not just wheelchairs. There are standers, walkers, gait trainers, adaptive bicycles, adaptive seating, communication devices, and bath chairs. This equipment not only offers to meet their basic needs for a child, it also offers independence, play with friends and siblings, participate in mealtime, and just be a kid. The Cole Foundation has and will continue to reach out to the Hastings schools, local hospitals, therapy organizations such as Caring Hands and the Family Achievement Center who provide services to children that have, that would benefit from the Cole Foundation's help. This impact award will allow the Cole Foundation to continue to grow get proper storage for our adapted equipment that we are now growing out of, proper parts for the equipment when needed, pay vendor fees to continue to be present in the Hastings community and the surrounding area, purchase a much needed adaptive bike that costs $1,700 that private insurance and medical insurance has denied for a child for special needs here in the Hastings area. I'd like to point out this little girl, this mom was so excited to show me a picture of her daughter being able to get to dance class with her adaptive walker. And so I leave you with this. Can you imagine your child or your grandchild not able to access this basic need? The Impact Award will help the Cole Foundation to continue to grow. And together we will be able to change the lives of special needs children and their families forever. Thank you, and thank you for this opportunity to share. So questions, anyone have questions? Yeah. Is there a reason why insurance doesn't cover? Ha, I wish that you're the devil. the government. <laughs> Yeah, and that was some of my energy in the beginning was to fight these insurances or even DHS and medical. I mean, I'm talking about medical assistance. They don't cover bikes. I mean, that $1,700 bike, that's going to come out of the cost. It came out of our cost, and we're very lucky that we were able to afford it. But there are so many families that can't. That's a ton of money. Um, so no, and instead of spending the energy of fighting these big, bad insurances, I can. And medical assistance. I figured my energy is better at starting a nonprofit that can actually help these families now. From families that have grown equipment, when I first started, and that was our first phase, we needed the equipment to be able to redonate it out. It's amazing how many families have equipment that they sit in their garage because they don't know what to do with it. They know how expensive it is, but how do they, they find another family that's going to use it? Um, this was something that I experienced when my son started growing a couple of pieces of his equipment. And as I called, even places like Pacer, if you've heard of Pacer, they're very, um, they wouldn't take the equipment. Uh, called Courage Kenny, they wouldn't take the equipment. And this is when I started getting the idea of thinking, we need a cool foundation. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the, it's families that donate it and we clean it up. I have someone that helps me inspect it because I'm not a profession in that by any means. I'm just a mom that has, that has a kid. Well, I do work, but <laughs> I have it. I, I just know like from my son's experience with having adaptive equipment, but there's so much out there of different apparatuses. Um, and right now that's how we're getting the equipment basically just an exchange. Our second phase is to also have um, enough funds where we can purchase pieces of equipment that are very difficult to obtain or that were covered by private insurance or medical assistance, such as a bike where we could purchase that piece of equipment based on an application that families would do. Yeah. What's the current state of equipment? Yeah, so there are, I think there are 258 uh, kids from the age of five through 18 that have special needs here in Hastings. So those kids are here. Um, 
do all of them need adaptive equipment? No, but I can promise you a great portion of them would absolutely get help from the Cole Foundation. And that's why I also spoke about uh, children's Gillette and different therapy places, say play therapy, um, River Valley Riders, which is horse therapy. Kids that are in this community go out to those places to get their therapies, and that's where we meet them. I think there's not, did you have one of Yeah. But now I'm changing it. <laughs> so how do you partner with other organizations to continue to broaden the outreach to grow your families that need you yeah. the equipment? I can tell you through trial and error, my greatest outreach that has just electrified, and this is why I need help, I need more help, volunteers, more funds, for us to continue to grow. Gillette Children's, these PT, speech, and uh, OT therapists, they're like on fire. They know about the Cole Foundation. They're helping their families because there's a lot of these kids that get the adaptive equipment that they're able to use at school or at therapy, but not at home. There's that gap and they're at home way more than they're at school or the one, two times a week that they're at therapy. So they've been huge advocates and I do a lot of presentations and work with them. I actually don't even need to do presentations anymore. They keep asking me for more brochures and I'm sending them out for more brochures because they're handing them out to their patients. That's a great question. Thank you. Perfect. All right, I think we're at time.
Who doesn't want to thrive, right? Who, who doesn't want to do well, be good, be well? Right? I think that that's a good idea. So in 2018, and this is about three years actually after we started the initiative, because we started thinking about diversity in Hastings, and we realized that it was that Hastings was not. We had a reputation of being lily white, and people said, "Oh, Hastings, oh, there's no diversity there." It, but we watched it happen, and as we watched it happen, we prepared for it by making sure that the community was ready and helping the community to be ready to welcome all. And so in 2018, the school district and the city council had a joint proclamation that was it just a huge deal. There was 250 people there on a Sunday afternoon, a beautiful Sunday in April, and, and people heard that resolution and bought into it. And we are happy and we are proud that the mission of Thrive is to make sure that we all have a welcoming community where all people can live, visit, and thrive. Our three initiatives are to improve, oh, did you get it? I don't know, my, my belly's in the way. <laughs> that happens all the time. <laughs> Maybe it's no big deal. No, that's all right. No, my belly's in the way all the time, so it's not an issue. So. Yeah, anyhow, to, to improve trust and safety for the community. And, and pardon me? It says not on the sheet. No, I see it. You don't have a slide. Oh. Amy, I, I, no, I, I, can, I can see it. I, I, I can see it. But, but to improve trust and safety for all, to expand cultural competency in Hastings, and to build bridges so that everybody feels welcome. And... We've done an awful lot, but you know, this isn't bricks and mortar. This isn't something that's easily seen. And so much of what we've done is hard to see, but it's penetrating and it's deep and it's involved hundreds and thousands of people throughout the community. Thrive was part of uh, 35 events and trainings that included online discussions, even during COVID we had 15 online discussions, which that, that's pretty cool. We hosted and supported virtual and in-person events, including author visits, a community discussion, local law enforcement, the longer cable event, that was a Thrive initiative. And we had two different events about transgender persons and, and making sure that we understand and, and accept uh, transgender persons, and starring Ellie who's outstanding, she's amazing. The power of 100, no, we do have it, we really do have it. Sorry, that's all right, no, that's all right, that's okay. Um, but the, the power of 100 gift really provided us with a chance to finally work toward those objectives using uh, the third method that we've been struggling with, or working on, and, and that has to do with supporting activism and making sure that, that, that we are penetrating the community, not just at the level of, of inviting people in to, to hear about our discussions, but also changing policy and changing procedure. And so I'm happy to say that we've had an impact on community policy at the city level and also at the school district level because of our efforts in letter writing camp campaigns and just being um, persistent. She persisted. That's what I've heard. We've also met with school leadership to discuss uh, what, what's what's going on and making sure that all of our policies are aligned. We're proud that we have encouraged that, and we are encouraged by the fact that keeping those conversations alive. We've got some new nonprofits in the community like IDEA, and IDEA stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Alliance, and also the Transparent, Alli the Transparent Alliance. There we go. Stand up, lead. Stand up, lead. Stand up, lead. Woo! Stand up, lead. And, uh, and, and just making sure that, that we're supporting different voices along the way. So my very good friend, Angie House. Thank you. We're really working towards active partnerships, not only with these new nonprofits, but also with established 
organizations like Hastings Reef and BR Forum, which is Building Remembrance and Reconciliation. They are doing amazing work in our community and bringing light to our history and heritage in an accurate and meaningful way. This promotes inclusion and in healing. We are recently created a submission process utilizing the power of 100 generosity to partner with and provide funding and support to these groups and other community efforts. Knowing that we cannot build a movement that encourages a welcoming community for all by ourselves. <laughs> the work of Thrive is mushrooming, gaining, gaining traction and building community. As a grassroots community effort, we are also utilizing resources to engage the community through marketing such as all our welcome signs and window signs in more than one language that can be posted by neighbors and by local businesses. We also look forward to working with the Chamber to help local businesses support the needs of a more diverse workforce in our community as well. Thrive is not a bricks and mortar project, it's something that you can easily see. This is something that our voice is in our efforts, no matter how large or small, make a difference. In partnerships that are fueled by your generosity, Thrive will continue to provide educational forums, encourage community conversations, and support activism in efforts so we can all live together in a community where people are all valued and able to thrive. We really thank you for all of the help that you have given our community and our organization. That's it? That's it? I, I was just going to do this! <laughs>
um, will be on the back. Uh, so you are going to write your check to the award winner. Now, if you choose to give above and beyond, you can absolutely do that. The checks for the award winner are going to be collected with your name tag, so tuck it back in your name tag so we can tally, because if you're not here, your check still needs to get collected. So for those that are watching live, for those that did proxy, we want to make sure um, if the check isn't here within 7 to 10 days, that person um, opts out and their seat is given to someone else because we have had a waiting list. So um, we have built a venue capacity for the most part, and we have allowed everyone in that we absolutely can. Uh, but there are a few vacant seats right now that we will fill. So um, if you know somebody that's interested, make sure they go online and fill out the membership. So again, once we announce this winner who is in this envelope, you're going to write your check out to them, tuck it in your name tag, and the Core 10 team is going to walk around and get those so that we can tally those tonight. If you would like to give above and beyond, you're going to take that money, check, cash, whatever, and you're going to see the other charities over by their tables. And we urge you to talk with them, get involved, ask more questions, volunteer. That's always a great thing. Um, we've all won tonight because we learned about them. Uh, they learned about what we do, and so nobody walks away with nothing. And I think that is amazing in its own right. Um, there's things I didn't know that these organizations did. We didn't even know the Cole Foundation existed. So, like, that was cool, right? <laughs> um, so, anyways, uh, everyone wins. We're going to do this uh, quick announcement, and everybody will start chatting, and I totally understand that. So, uh, <laughs> um, a couple quick things before we do that. Our next meetings. So, it is April, April and October of 2023. Don't have the definite dates, but as soon as we do, we will shoot those out via email to all of you. Um, if you are not getting our emails, make sure you let one of the core 10 team know, and we'll figure out what's going on there. We do get picked up by spam every now and then. You think we have that figured out by now, but we don't. The algorithm at Google and Comcast and whatever keeps changing. So, um, and then uh, let's see. I think that's it. So, thank you so much. Award-winning charities and the other charities stick around. We've got tallies to do. We've got a big check we need a picture taken with, all of that good stuff. But otherwise, um, after you turn in your checks, you are free to go. And we just appreciate every one of you being here and being a part of something so awesome in our community. So with that, we are going to announce the winner. And the winner is the Cole Foundation.